Here's the thing. Completely uncapping campaign budgets, oftentimes even if the ACoS is good, is a stupid strategy. I'm gonna illustrate to you through the data why that happens and why that's the case. So bear with me, today's gonna be a little bit of a rant video. It's also hopefully gonna be a very informative one because this is a conversation that I've been having a lot, right? So we're headed into Q4, Black Friday, Cyber Monday for context. And a lot of times budgets run out these this time of year, right? There's a lot of traffic on the platform. There's a lot of people searching, a whole lot of clicks happening. So regardless if we're even increasing our bids at all or if performance is good, the ad spend just often naturally increases increases. And depending on what your campaign budgets are, those budgets might be running out. And I understand the fear and just the not wanting to lose out, right? There's that whole FOMO factor. And if you go into the budget tab inside of your ad console, you're going to see Amazon tell you, look at all of these sales that you're missing out on. Look, if you had this little bit of additional ad spend, and oftentimes their suggestions are not always a little bit. So look, if you doubled your ad budget on this campaign that, you know, sometimes has really good ACoS or ROAS, look how much additional sales you could be making. And so oftentimes what happens is there's this, like we increase it and we increase it and we increase it. But the thing that we're not factoring in is that ad spend increase on your total ACoS or the profitability of your account. And that is something that we have been really making sure that we keep an eye on this time of year because it is so, so easy. It can happen in the blink of an eye to increase your ad spend. Again, even if your ACoS is performing great and end up losing money. And that's not something I want to happen to you in your account. And so we're going to walk through some scenarios. I'm going to show you why. And it has to do with something called ad sale percentage, which by the way, if you would like a copy of uh, this spreadsheet, there will be a link in the description, enter in an email, send it to you. You can make a coffee and you can play around with it for yourself. So the scenario of the account that I want to kind of walk through, we're going to start here to kind of illustrate and help you understand the impact of ad sale percentage on the account, how that impacts your ACoS and your total ACoS. And then we'll work in some forecast numbers in introducing new additional ad spend into the account. And again, why even if the ACoS is at your target ACoS, you still might end up losing money at the end of the day. So here is this scenario, which by the way, if you are making a copy of the spreadsheet for yourself and you're wanting to plug in your own numbers, the only things that you'll need to plug in is this total sales ad spend and ACOS. So all of the things that kind of have a highlighted box around them, anything that has a gray box around it has formulas contained in it. So here we have an account where we have $1,000 of total sales, we have $100 of ad spend, and we're running at a 20% ACoS. So at a 20% ACoS, we're actually calculating out the ad sales for you. So this is $500 in ad sales, which gives us a 10% total ACoS and a 50% ad sale percentage. And remember I said that this scenario, the pivotal number that a lot of people don't factor in to the increase in the ad spend is this ad sale percentage. So we're gonna go over how you calculate it, what it means, um, and then how it also can play into your profitability numbers. So ad sale percentage, how you calculate this, is your ad sales divided by your total sales. And what does it mean, right? So what it means is what percentage of my total sales are coming from my ads. So the higher your ad sale percentage number, the more of your total sales are having to be driven through ads. So the more reliant your account is on ad sales to support or kind of maintain your total sales volume, right? So in the beginning, this is actually the reason why total ACoS ends up being really high in accounts is because the higher your ad sale percentage, the closer your ACoS is to your total ACoS. And let me kind of illustrate that real quick by plugging in $200 of ad spend here, which is going to give us $1,000 of ad sales, which means that we have 100% ad sale percentage, meaning all of our sales currently are coming from ads, which again is a very common scenario if you're doing, say, a product launch, especially if you're doing an ads only or Amazon PPC only product launch, 
which is still a good viable launch strategy, right? But in these cases, in the beginning, all of our sales are gonna be coming from ads because we have no organic rankings yet. And in this case, we can see that our ACoS is equivalent to our total ACoS here. And why could this be a problem, right? So for illustration purposes, we're going to assume that this particular account before ads has a 20% profit margin. I really hope you're launching products with a larger than a 20% profit margin before ads. But again, for illustration purposes, we're just going to say this is going to be the case, right? So at a 20% profit margin, a 20% ACoS would be our quote, break even ACoS. Break even ACoS is a fancy way of saying that our ACoS is equivalent to our profit margin. What does this mean? This means that we're technically not losing money when it comes to our ad spend, but we're not really making any money on our ad sales either, right? And because again, if we're spending our entire profit margin on the ads, on the ad spend to be able to generate that exact sales, well, then again, we're kind of just spinning our wheels. Now, this isn't necessarily a problem if we're looking at simply the advertising because you're essentially allowing whatever ad sales you're generating to you're you're putting that margin back into the ad spend and there is sort of this flywheel effect it is a factor that your ad sales in Amazon advertising will help influence your organic ranking. So that's what the ad sale percentage, right? If 100% of my total sales are coming from ads, well, then I have no organic ranking. If I have 80% of my total sales coming from ads, well, then I have 20% of my sales that are organic sales, meaning I didn't have to spend on advertising to be able to generate those sales. And that's kind of how the flywheel works. So in the beginning, again, you're probably going to have 100% ad sale percentage, and then you're going to be able to, you know, kind of increase and get a little bit more organic ranking. And so your ad sale percentage is going to go down and it's going to go down to the point of, you know, you might get to say about this scenario where we have 50% of our total sales are coming from ads, but we have another 50% that is organic sales, meaning we don't have to spend on ads to be able to generate that. And this would be probably an account or most people would probably want a little bit higher total sales volume, but we have good sales volume, we're spending about $100, we have a 20% A cost, a 10% total A cost, and maybe a 50% ad sale percentage, which we're like, total A cost looks great, A cost looks great, okay, I'm very satisfied in this scenario, okay? So now that we kind of understand the relationships between these numbers and how ad sale percentage can have an impact on our A cost and total A cost and how our account overall is performing, what does that have to do with campaign budgets, all right? So now let's use this forecast tool to plug in some numbers and I'm gonna show you what most people assume is going to happen when they add additional spend in the form of campaign budget increases because if you are increasing budgets in your account on your campaigns, you are increasing your ad spend. So then the question is, what is the impact on that ad spend and the assumption for most people when they're increasing those budgets is that the numbers are going to be linear. So I'm gonna show you what linear numbers look like and then we're gonna go through what often is the case and why there's impact on our total A cost numbers or our profit margins when it comes to these kind of budget increases, okay? So I'm going to assume, again, we're gonna forecast in, we're gonna plug in some new additional ad spend. I'm gonna say that we added an additional $50 in our ad spend. And I'm just gonna plug in this ad sale percentage number here because again, most people assume that this is going to be how things work and they're gonna say, hey, everything is gonna remain equal. All of my averages are going to remain consistent. All I'm doing is adding additional budget. So I'm assuming I'm still getting about 50% of my, you know, of this new ad sales, about 50% of this is going to be organic. And then again, we're going to plug in our account averages. So we're going to say a cost is 20%, right? Because we're looking at the account. Wow, all of, you know, these campaigns that I'm increasing my budgets on, these are all 20% a cost, which is well within my targets. I'm super happy here. And so, you know, we assume that this is what's going to happen in the account. Okay, so we're going to go over kind of like how these numbers calculate out the assumptions. And then we're going to go and we're going to adjust the ad sale percentage a little bit. And you're going to kind of see that wow, maybe things aren't exactly the way I thought they worked. 
in the account. Okay. So with this new additional ad spend, we generate it again. If our it cost is 20%, we're generating an additional $250 of ad sales, which is at this additional ad spend, we have about a 50%. This new ad spend is about a 50% over what our current ad spend is here. And the assumption is if we have a 50% ad sale percentage, that in addition to what this $250 of additional, again, ad sales are going to be at a 50% ad sale percentage, we are assuming that we're also going to make an additional $250 in organic sales, which means that again, if all things remained equal in the account and everything was linear, we would have an additional $500 in total added sales meaning organic plus the additional ad sales added to the account for this $50 increase in the ad spend. Again, because we're looking at these ratios right here, which would mean at the end of the day, again, if everything was linear and everything worked the way that a lot of people assume it's going to work, that we go from having not just $1,000, we're now making $1,500, we did add $50 in ad spend, but now we went from $500 in ad sales to $750 in ad sales. Our A costs remain the same, our total A costs remain the same, and our ad sale percentage is the same. So we're like, look, we added additional ad spend into the account. All we're doing is pushing total sales volume. Everything is fabulous. Why not spend more, right? And this is the assumption that if we don't increase our ad spend, if we don't allow, you know, just that continuous running of the ads, then we're going to be missing out on this extra $250 in organic reach. And that is not the case. Because what often happens is that the best performing campaigns in accounts are oftentimes things like automatic campaigns, broad match campaigns, maybe our larger, maybe more loosely relevant campaigns. And with these sort of match types, often what happens is the things that you're converting on at that really, really good ACoS are not necessarily those exact keywords, but oftentimes they're like one-off search terms. So you have like one click, one sale here, a 3% ACoS, and then like two clicks here, one sale from it, and a 10% ACoS, and like the blended ACoS on that overall target as well as the campaign looks amazing. And you're like, this is well within my 20% ACoS goals. All of this is great. Why not increase the ad spend? But the thing that a lot of people miss out on is what is the organic sales lift impact of that additional ad spend. And most people will assume that that is linear. And I can tell you that that is relatively never the case unless it is like say a major ranking keyword or something that you really can push the organic rankings on. Because oftentimes if you look at these additional searches, one or two sales here and there is not enough to give you that organic rank impact. Now, am I saying, is there no impact in organic ranking for additional ad spend? No. Am I saying that there isn't this flywheel and this beautiful able, you know, ability with Amazon advertising that's very unique to the platform to be able to push additional organic visibility and sales and ranking? No, that is absolutely the case. I am just saying that although something is performing well in the ads, that doesn't always mean that is going to have the equivalent impact on your organic ranking. And so I'm going to show you and illustrate to you what is going to happen if this additional ad spend, so these $250 of ad sales in the account doesn't lead to the same organic impact as the original spend in the account. Okay, let's look at see what this happens. Okay, so if we go here, we're still making the same additional ad sales, right? We're still making this $250. Now we have a 50% increase. So we didn't change our ad spend and we're still making really good A costs on this. The difference is in the additional organic sales. And oftentimes the assumption is, hey, if I'm spending more, if I'm making more sales, I should see an organic lift. 
And again, there is an organic lift impact, but it's not always as large as you would think it. And it really depends on the ad type and how things are, just how things perform, how that flywheel works on those individual search terms. So in this case, instead of making an additional $250 in organic sales, we're only making an additional $83 dollars and 33 cents in organic sales, which translates to, yes, we had an overall increase in our total sales for, again, this $50 of additional ad spend, but we're only looking at an additional $333 and 33 cents of total added sales, again, because we're not seeing as much of an organic lift for this additional ad spend. Now, what does that look like for the blended ratios in the account? I'm gonna show you right now. So if we add in this additional ad spend, this is what our new final results are going to be. So we're going from $1,000 to making 1,333 and change, right? We still have the same ad spend, so we're still doing an additional 150 as opposed to 100. We still have an increase in the ad sales, so we went from doing $500. Again, we're still doing the exact same when it comes to the ad sales lift. We still have the same ACOS. Because again, the A cost of this new additional ad spend is still within our 20% targets. And the thing is, oftentimes we'll look at just the ads, right? And this is a really big problem if you don't look at the entire account and the impacts of you know what your ads are doing on the entire account performance. This is where you can get into trouble. Because what would happen is we would look at this and we'd say, well, well we increased the ad spend, right? We saw the lift in the ad sales, which is fabulous. And we're doing the same thing. So essentially, again, just looking at the ads in isolation, we're spending more, we're making more, our performance is the same, everything is great until we zoom out a little bit. So we might zoom out and we might say like, well, there has been a lift in our total sales. So we are seeing that impact, which is good. If we're spending more, we would hope to be making more. But then we take a look at our total ACOS numbers and we see that it went up a little more than a point right? And we might be a little bit confused because we see the lift in the total sales, ads all look good, right? Ad performance is exactly the same as it was before. And in fact, better if we look at the additional ad sale volumes. And why did this happen? Because our new blended ad sale percentage is higher than it was before. Meaning there is some of this ad spend and additional ad sales that is not having as large of a contribution to our organic sales lift as we did before. And we might have observed this and maybe we said, well, I know that there's a point in the tacos, but I did see they add, you know, the new total sales lift, right? And so in this case, I might go back into my ads and we say, well, you know, my ACOS still looks good, right? I'm still maybe within my budget, my margins, you know, I still have margin on this product. So I'm seeing campaigns running out. Maybe there's still auto campaigns or broader match campaigns or other campaigns that I'm running just, you know, kind of low bids and not really my ranking strategy stuff, but I see that it's performing really, really well. And I think it makes sense to increase the ad spend. So maybe we go crazy. Maybe we put this all the way up to $100, right? So we're like, you know, yeah, I saw a bump in tacos, but everything seems to be working. Let me increase this. Now watch what happens again to the tacos number. Same ad sale percentage. We're just throwing more money in the machine that's at this particular ad sale percentage. A cost is still the same. We now also see a jump in A cost. So exactly the same thing happens with the ads, right? So we did have an additional ad spend, but now we're making $1,000 of ad sales as opposed to our $500. So we've had a jump there. And our A cost again, is exactly the same. We're assuming everything's linear for this additional ad spend. But when we look at our new tacos number, that has increased. And yes, the total sales have increased, but again, they haven't increased at the same rate. So I'm making more organic sales, but it's not having as big of an impact on the total sales as it should if we had those same ratios. So now when we look at the tacos number, we're seeing a 12% tacos, which is two points above where we had before. And yeah, our ads, total sales have increased. And so this might be a scenario that's okay for you. But oftentimes when we're looking at our entire account, we're trying to gauge if what we're doing with our ad spend makes sense, we might not be okay 
with having this, you know, this much of a decrease in our profitability, meaning increases in our total ACOS. And again, this is driven through our new ad sale percentage ratio, because what we're doing is we're looking at a blend of this at a 75% ad sale percentage and this at a 50% ad sale percentage. So our new blended ratios are the entire account is now operating at 60% of ad sale percentage, which means now, even though our total sales have increased, 60% of our in total sales are being driven through our ads, which means we are in a scenario where we're becoming more and more reliant on our ad spend to be able to drive total sales in our account, which can potentially long-term put accounts in not that great of a position. So I hope this kind of illustrates for you like why increasing additional ad spend, again, mainly in the form of increasing uh, budgets in campaigns. This also could be used to say like, well, I want to additionally add potentially say like $50 into my account. And I'm assuming that say 100% of this is going to be in additional ad sales, not necessarily any impact ranking. And I'm assuming that this new is going to be like at a 50% A cost. Like what is that going to impact my tacos for? This forecasting tool could also be used to kind of like gauge additional ad spend, be it for like other potential ranking campaigns, or if you want to like test new keywords or something, uh, you actually could use this tool too do that. This was a helpful, informative video. I just wanted to kind of, again, I get this question so often and it's one that it's kind of difficult to really understand how these numbers kind of play into each other and why increasing ad span could also lead to an increase in tacos if a cost is still good. Uh, so if you want a copy of this spreadsheet, feel free to check the link in the description box. I will get you a copy. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments.